We were fishing this one river and we weren't getting any bites at all. And I looked up to heaven, he said, he remembered this, he said, you looked up to heaven and said, Lord, just one, just give me one. And I caught a really nice steelhead. And then we went a long ways and no bites. I said, he said, you said to the Lord, maybe I should have asked for two. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's neat that you're getting to see so many people. Yeah, everybody has. Friends and relatives. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, everybody has been so kind and so good. Yeah. Now, was Ted one of your childhood friends? Yeah, he was my buddy. Yeah. And we were fishermen from <laughs> the get go, you know. And uh, so. Ted knew where all the fish were. <laughs> uh -huh. Good friend to have. A good friend to have. And uh, he knew where to find them and how to get them. And I had to relearn every year how to fish for them because every fish, uh, every place you fish, you got to fish differently. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my thing was, you, I was used to f fish grabbing a night crawler. You know, and that would be easy. Well, we were using spawn eggs, and uh, he said you have to memorize the bottom of the river and know where it's not supposed to stop, and if it stops, that's a bite. Uh -huh. You jerk right then. He said, "Don't wait, because if you wait, the f fish is always opening his mouth, and uh, and your leader will." pull that bait right out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn, you know, is this a bite or is this a snag or what? But I had to memorize the the hole first and then I could fish it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Ted was really... The science of Yeah, fishing. yeah, he was good. And uh, he was really good for all kinds of fish, but... Uh, I, I was when I was able to. I loved to go steelhead fishing hmm. because they jumped and they ran, and you know, boy, they're exciting on a fly rod. Hmm. And uh, so I had a ball fishes for those. They were good. Well, good, and you got to visit with your old fishing buddy, huh? Yeah. Tell fish stories. Yeah, we told fish stories. Boy, did they laugh a lot. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. long have you and Ted been friends? Since what grade? Well, uh, let's see, this is, let's see, I graduated in 58, right? Yes. Okay, and, and that was, uh, I was 18 when I graduated. So I was 12 when Ted and I became friends. Yeah, neat. Yeah. You were 10 years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pretty cool. And Ted has been solid with me. It's been, uh, it's been a real great experience. Uh, it was really strange because when I, when Ted and I first became friends, uh, he he was. Uh, his family was all Catholic, and I talked to him about the Lord, and I didn't care if he was a Catholic or not, but he didn't know Jesus. Right. And uh, he, uh, when I came to Air Force, uh, Ted accepted Christ, and he was uh, shunned by his family. Oh. And, uh, but he made it a, a call to the man that, uh, was the pastor of my home church there in Sparta, uh, who had been the pastor when I accepted Christ, and uh, hadn't he hadn't followed up with us, so I didn't know what happened to me. But he said, "Jim, I've called Pastor Kirk and asked him to talk to you when you're uh, home for your uh, visit before you go on your PCS station." He said, "Is that okay?" And I said, "Yeah, it's fine, no problem." So uh, I went up to Michigan 
And Pastor Kirk came over and he said, have you ever made a decision like this? I said, well, I think I did, but I said, I, I don't really know for sure. He said, well, let's make for sure. So we went ahead and he was a pastor when I accepted Christ, but he never came to my house. So I didn't ever know. And uh, so anyway, uh, Ted and I have stayed together uh, all these years and uh, he's, he's my bosom buddy, you know. He's a close, probably the closest friend I ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went out and danced together and danced together and fished together and, you know, did all the things that teenagers do <laughs> and uh, young people do. And he got me fixed up one time with a gorgeous cousin of his. Her, uh, She was in Muskegon, and this is the truth. Oh, our high school group used to go and uh, we'd all get in a car and drive to Muskegon and Barb would stick her head out and we'd all wave at her. <laughs> but we went to Muskegon 26 miles away just to see Barb. <laughs> So she was that beautiful, and uh, so Ted, uh, when I came home one time, he said, uh, before I went to Alaska, he said, oh, by the way, do you want a double date with uh, Judy and I? I said, you, you date with Barbara. And I said, Barbara? I said, I'll be ready in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I was ready in five minutes. <laughs> and... Uh, and that was the first time I ever had pizza. I was 19 years old and never had had pizza. Oh. And we had sausage pizza and uh, we played chess, which I had never played before either. I was more uh, concerned about her than I was about the board. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, when we were growing up, pizza wasn't everywhere like no. it is now. I mean, yeah. There might be one pizza shop in a big I, area. I can't you know? remember ever having. We had pizza at my Aunt Ann's house, or maybe it was Mona's house. One of my mother's sisters made, she had been in California, and anyhow, Pizza was new, but we never bought one out. We never went to, we didn't have any pizza shops or anything there where I grew up at. Pizza was kind of a new thing. Yeah. Uh, now. Yeah, you can't go anywhere without sitting. We'll little children, two years old, they cut their eye teeth on the I know it, I know it. <laughs> yeah, my wife and I, when we were on a trip with the kids, uh, uh, we had this place in uh, New Mexico. An Indian lady, I think, made the pizza, and it was, it was just absolutely supreme. It was wonderful, mm -hmm. and uh, she came out and met us, and we had bragged on her. And said, "This is, we've had pizza all over, and we had, all over." I said, "But nothing compares to this one. This is really great." And she said, "Well," I said. And so, so if anybody ever asks, we'll tell them, stop here and get some pizza. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> oh, I never followed up with that date, though. And uh, yeah. she didn't get married till she was 40 because she was so beautiful. <laughs> Everybody thought she was beyond reach. Unobtainable. Huh? Yeah, unattainable. <laughs> And but I'm glad I didn't because I met my sure. sweetheart. Yeah. And We're glad you didn't too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's important for my timeline. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, you might be so beautiful. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, she was really a looker. That's oh, for sure. Oh goodness. Yeah. But that's a. You know, I've had a funny life, and it's been lots of enjoyment, lots of laughter. I've rarely seen you when you're not, don't have a great big smile on your face. I can't remember actually ever seeing you with a big <laughs> smile on your face. Well, God has been so good, he, and he's, he's given me funny things that happen, and uh, 
uh, in my life wherever I've been and it's been fun just enjoying life you know when I went in, when I went into the schools as a storyteller I was trying to they were saying don't do drugs and don't do other. it's all negative and I said no I said let's uh, live life there's so many things you can do yes <laughs> and I did a positive approach to my stories uh -huh, that's and uh, so the teachers loved them and the kids loved them and and I loved going into schools. Uh, that was funny the way that came about too, because Camille was working for San Antonio Baptist Association, and uh, we were having trouble with gangs, and so uh, she was on the committee, and and she asked me to serve on it. So I said okay, and uh, so we got uh, twenty some preachers together with their wives and fed them. Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> and uh, they were all doing about, about information about all the drugs and everything. And I said, uh, oh, wait a minute, let me ask you a question. What can a man do to keep kids from getting involved in this stuff? And they said, become known in the elementary schools uh, around your church. Hmm. That was it. So I told my secretary the next day, I'm going to the school to volunteer to do whatever they want me to do. I said, but it's important that I become involved to keep the kids from being involved. So uh, I went into schools, and it was really funny. The first one that I went into, she said, well, uh, Brother Jim, would you do me a favor? And I said, sure. She said, uh, the kids are going to have a test on this this book, six chapters. And could you read them this book? And uh, she said, uh, so they'll have a chance to compete with the others. I said, sure, no problem. So I said to her, started telling the story and reading read it and telling it. And... Uh, she kept coming by to hear it. And she said, excuse me, she said after the video was over, she said, but she said, you have such an interesting way to tell stories. She said, uh, uh, do you have any stories of your own? And I said, well, <laughs> I said, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> so, so, uh, I became known as a storyteller, and I went to f five uh, elementary schools and uh, had all kinds of experiences. But the kids just, uh, when I went to the church uh, where, uh, located where the schools were, uh, Harlandale Baptist Church, uh, we had seven kids, seven. And after three years of going into the schools, I counted one Wednesday night, 100 kids wow. that had come and they had told their mom and dad about me and stuff. And I said, well, you can't come to my church. Can we go to your church? I said, only if your mom and dad tell you it's okay. I said, I don't want any trouble with anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what happened. Wonderful. God really blessed it. But it's so much, God has given me so much fun in life. That's wonderful. It's a wonderful way to feel. It is. Hey, Dad, uh, Mark's son Aaron is on the phone. Aaron's on the phone. Oh, hello. hi, Aaron. Hello, how are you? I am doing pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. Can't complain too much. Well, good. <laughs> you heard about the guy, didn't you, that was uh, buried and he, he had for breakfast every day one soft-boiled egg and one hard-boiled egg? Huh. Did you ever hear that one? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, so his wife works really hard and finally made the perfect soft boiled egg and a perfect hard boiled egg and she waited to hear his comment and after he got to eat his eggs he said oh, 
You hard boiled the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that one? Oh yeah, no, that, that, that was funny. <laughs> well, where are you? I'm up in uh, Washington State. Oh man, I've been up there. I'm about, um, I think, about an hour and a half away from the Canadian border. Oh boy, you are up there. Yeah. That's pretty country, though, and, uh, oh, on the seaside. Beautiful. Yeah, and uh, uh, I've been. I'm here on, uh, here on uh, Whidbey Island, so the uh, the drive onto the island over across the bridge, or even whenever you, if you come south from Seattle, you you can take the ferry onto the island. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most beautiful drives I've ever done in my life. Oh wow! Sounds like it's a, it's a glorious deal. I was up there twice, and so I, I got a visual uh, in my mind. I see a vision of Washington, and uh, I enjoyed it up there. He's getting ready to move to Florida. What a change. Yes. Yes. The, uh, the Navy soft enough to send me down to Florida to go, uh, go instruct. <laughs> Um, new people out of boot camp. Well, boy, that's quite a responsibility. Oh, absolutely. I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's what I wanted to do, so. Yeah. The first. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> well, I'm proud for you. You have a Thank good, you. you have a good day today at uh, uh, looking at the mountains and, and uh, the ocean and and uh, all the wonderful trees that are there, and the fruit trees and the others. And uh, th if you look at the river, the Columbia River, you might see some steelhead or something running. <laughs> it's, actually, it's, 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 it's actually very common, common here on the island, out in the harbor, um, during uh, whenever it's the season, we actually can see the orcas from the island. Oh my goodness. Well, that's really something. I haven't been on the island, but I've been on the mainland. So that, that was an experience. Well, you you have a great life, okay? And you thank God for it because God gives you every day a uh, chan chance to meet new people and, and to enjoy all of the beauty you're going to get to see and uh, to have adventures all over the place. Uh-huh. So God bless you. Thanks for talking to me. Oh, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, here. And that's his. Son. Oh, the son. The oldest one? Mm -hmm. 28, yeah. Well, yeah. well he's going to have a real change from Washington to Florida. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's been on an island out there. And I haven't, I don't remember that island, but I remember there were some there. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so. Now, when were you in Alaska? Did, have you been to Alaska? Yes. When was that? That was uh, 1959 through 62. So when you, were you were single, right? Yeah, I was uh -huh. definitely single. Yeah. And, the, uh -huh. and, the, and, the, <laughs> and the, what was funny is that I was a member of a, a church that had a large group of young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, I didn't like the way the girls would go after a new guy that came to the church. So I didn't want to have a thing to do with the girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, I was invited by my master sergeant, Dobson, to have a breakfast one day with him. It was moose steak. It was wonderful. But uh, his daughter was beautiful. And she picked me up and she said, Jim Simmons, you know what? And I says, no what? She said, all the girls at the church want to date you. I said, they do? He said, yeah. I said, well, I said, it's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, they said, 
that's what we like about you. You're you're not you're different than the rest of the guys. You're your own guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm my own guy. So I went out and had breakfast with her and uh Dobson was a great guy. And uh he had killed this moose at the right time. He had let it uh uh, what do you call it, hang up and cure. Cure, yeah, cure a certain time and then he cut certain steaks out of it the steak, that was that thick Ooh. and it covered the plate and I ate it with a fork my goodness mm -hmm. and it was really good <laughs> so were you stationed there in Alaska? yeah, I was okay. stationed Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my PCS station, and that's where God called me to preach. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, good. Well, I was pastor at a small church called Solana, mm -hmm. which is down on the Kenai Peninsula. So uh, I got to see a lot of beauty and wonder uh, in Alaska. And I had some bad experiences. I. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Mark ever knew this or not, but one time I jumped from, we had climbed a mountain, and I jumped from one rock to another one thinking my shoes would catch the edge of it, and they didn't. And so I started ro rolling down the mountain, and I, I somehow saw a bush, and I willed myself to grab that bush. Because if I roll all the way down that mountain, I, I would have, you would have died probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, God let me get a hold of that bush. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a. You almost worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So God was good to me and let me get the hold of that Wonderful. thing. I didn't do that one again. I said, no more of this. <laughs> when you're going down, you just pick up speed. Uh -huh. And you just, you can't believe how fast you're going. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got a hold of that bush and how that bush held me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, God is good, that's how. Yeah. <laughs> Plan yeah. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you all. Okay. You all are great. The story about the moose and the bear and the fisherman, that's one of my favorite stories. But I can't this remember is, how it goes right. Do you need some water? Are you getting thirsty? This is, a, this is a true story. I had it checked out by the mechanics. I had it checked out by the fish and game people that I knew that I became friends with. They told me that his second lieutenant went fishing. And uh, unknown to him, a bull moose had been in the river and a grizzly bear had come up after that bull moose. And the bull moose was upset. And uh, this lieutenant got out of his his uh, little bug uh, of a car, and he uh, turned down to the river, he thought. And uh, this bull moose was upset, so he charged him. He went up the tree. He said, well, then the bear ro rolled around and the moose took off. And so the guy says, okay. My troubles are over, I'm going to go down fishing. So he started down the thing again, and he ran into the moose again. And the moose chased him back up the chair. <laughs> Three. <laughs> and then <laughs> the moose went away because the bear came around. And so he climbed down the tree. <laughs> Headed for the river again. <laughs> the bear turned around and said, Well, if I can't have moose steak, I'll have man, it'll be all right. <laughs> so the bear turned on him and he ran back up the tree again. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so 
<laughs> he got mad at the bear and the moose. So he said, you know, you guys are wrecking my fishing. You ruined my fishing. So he got in his car and he chased them around this field and bumping them. And the, and the moose and the bear tearing up his car. <laughs> he reported back at the base and, and his front end was smashed and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he just lost his cool. <laughs> That's an encounter of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. And I checked on it. It really was true. The guys at the mechanic shop said, yeah, we worked on it. And he said, did it over $200. That was a lot of money back in those days. 200 damage to the front of that car. <laughs> So, I thought that was hilarious. You know, a guy can get so mad he turn on a bull moose and on a... <laughs> and a Anger overcame his fear. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was an interesting experience anyway. <laughs> God's been good to me. I've had so much fun everywhere I've been. And... Uh, had, in Alaska, I had great fishing. I never did go hunting because I just, if I have a choice between shooting something and catching something, I'd rather catch it. <laughs> and there were, the things they hunt in Alaska are pretty big, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had uh, stories about that. Two of them, uh, one of them was that this guy flew over a valley and uh, they spotted a grizzly bear and uh, so he set up a place for him to shoot it and uh, he had one of these guns that were made just for Alaska for the big game and he shot that bear and the bear turned and came towards him and uh, he eventually killed the bear but the bear killed him, too. That happened. And then another one was, uh, my friend told me that the uh, uh, two guys were walking up a mountain path. And the front guy had a vest on for water because the water was over here. And uh, unknown to them, they were being uh, shadowed by a bear. And uh, they came to a hill, uh, and the, the first guy with a vest on disappeared. And uh, all the guy in the back heard was bear. And uh, Grizzly Bear had been following them. And he wiped out, just with one swipe, he took the, the, uh, the vest off. And uh, the guy came running around, and he didn't have time even to raise his gun. He shot from the hip, and he shot that bear. And that bear turned on him, and he just barely got it. So those things did happen. But uh, it's, it's one of the things that I never saw a grizzly bear, you know, when I was in Alaska. And uh, I didn't see a polar bear. Uh, I didn't. Eat, oh, I I saw where a grizzly bear had been, where a big uh, big one, where I'd passed her. Yeah. Uh, in the springtime, uh, he had come. I stayed with the Jacksons, and he came that night. And a dog let us know that he was in the area, and this guy had horses and pigs and that bear had robbed some of these from the other homesteaders mm -hmm. and uh, so the Mr. Jackson uh, threw open the light and the light went out and and uh, he took his gun and shot it in the air and uh, the bear ran off but the next morning uh, through the field the field, 
that you could see where that bear had been. And uh, so one of the guys said he was going to get a you get that bear. So uh, it's, it's one that was familiar in the area. Mm -hmm. And so he got a gun and he got in his, his uh, Jeep and he waited for that bear and he could see the, the, the trees being broken and parted. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> he said that bear came through there. <laughs> He said he looked at his gun, he looked at that bear, and he, he said, he just sat there and started praying. <laughs> and I, you know, somebody asked him, well, what, what, didn't you have your gun? He yeah, said, why did you shoot that bear? He said, what, and get it mad? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to see one. <laughs> That's the closest. Well, I had a, another encounter where a guy got lost going moose hunting up there. And uh, where he got lost, it didn't make sense at all because there was a road, a, a bridge, and uh, the river, and uh, a road down here. So, I mean, he, he shouldn't have got lost. Yeah. But the tundra will fool you. Hmm. And... Uh, so we volunteered to go look for this guy. He'd been lost for three days. Oh my. And uh, they told us to watch out. Uh, there's uh, a grizzly bear that is in that section of the woods. And uh, so we were given, said, if you see the guy, shoot your 22 up in the air. And uh, we'll c congregate at that place. Well, we started into the tundra and we came to a stream full of salmon, just absolutely packed. But on the other side of this stream was fresh bear tracks. And I was the one following them. <laughs> and so you couldn't even see your buddies on both sides because of the tundra. And I stepped into I don't know what, and I sunk all the way down to my armpits. And I thought, I've just found the cave where this bear lives. <laughs> He's going to eat me alive. <laughs> I managed to get out of there, and uh, we did find the guy that day. And uh, never did see that bear, but... I saw the footprints, so I was close to him. <laughs> well, we, that old guy, if he had just continued walking on that river, he'd have seen that bridge. But he stopped, set up camp, built a fire. We had planes flying over there, and nobody ever spotted him. And that opened, you know, like it, it was open. Mm -hmm. And you'd think it, it was impossible for someone for three days to be lost yeah. with all those planes and, uh -huh. and, 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 and all that. And, but he was, and so we got him saved anyway. But <laughs> it was a funny experience. <laughs> but I don't want to ever come face to face with a grizzly bear. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some experiences you can skip, huh? Yeah, I can skip that one. <laughs> well, we had uh, Alaska was great for me because God called me to preach, and uh, I got to go fishing where I could actually stand up in a boat and pick the fish I wanted to catch. Wow. So you think Alaska is the most beautiful place you've ever seen? I'd probably say yes. Mm -hmm. I used to love to climb a mountain and just look at the scenery and uh, listen to the brooks. There's almost always a water coming down from those snow-capped mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So uh, it's beautiful, even in wintertime, the, the Johnson's Pass, where I had to go through to, to, to go to my place of preaching, just a lot of sparkled like a, a million diamonds. And uh, I had the northern lights and uh, just the adventure. Uh, we stopped at a place where this lady made the greatest uh, uh, cinnamon rolls you ever put in your mouth. And we, we stopped there every time. <laughs> yeah, I went in there and we had a wonderful uh, conversation with her. And uh, I got to, and I don't, I'm still trying to figure out how we got across. I can't remember ever a bridge, but there must have been a bridge because we were going along the Kenai River and suddenly we were on the Kenai Peninsula and uh, we were on that all the way to Salada mm -hmm. at Volcani uh, Cash, so I don't know. And uh, one little old stream in there, I caught some nice trout off. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it was really quite, a, quite an adventure. <laughs> but, you don't worry about snakes in Alaska because they can't, they can't live. But you got to worry about the bears. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun in Alaska. And, uh, but I stayed single. Uh, I didn't, did I ever tell you the story about uh, my mother uh, working at child evangelism and and meeting this girl that she thought was perfect for me. I remember you talking about a girl that they had picked out for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, I quit writing her and broke her heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> my mother was something else. But when I called about my sweetheart, I said, Mother, I've met her. This is the girl that God has for me. And she says, are you, Jim, do you know what you're doing? I was 29. You know what you're doing? I said, well, I think I, I, think I do, Mom. And she says, here, here's your big brother. So she turned me over to Roger. Roger said, do you know what you're doing? I said, well, I think I do. I'm 29. <laughs> and I said, she's amazing. And, and once my mother met her, she was immediately in love with her. Uh -huh. And... Uh, Everybody else, too, because she had that southern accent. When we went to Michigan, everybody just wanted her to talk. <laughs> and that beautiful southern name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was funny because my mother uh, liked green onions and my wife liked green onions. And I, I don't necessarily dislike them, but I'm not crazy about them. So uh, my mother had a garden uh, in and she had some of these green onions and she said to Camille, she said, uh, uh, honey, would you like some green onions, it's a fresh one, so we can go get them. And, and so she turned to me and she said, honey, if, if I eat green onions, will it be okay? And I said, I said, I won't kiss you for two weeks if you do. <laughs> and I got up and left, and she got so mad at me. And she, my wife said, don't you know your son by now? He said, he, said, he can't stay two weeks away from kissing me. <laughs> I'll whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a funny mother. She told one time when uh, we were in uh, Japan, she sent us a letter. She said, one of the worst blizzards that's ever happened here has happened here in Sparta. And uh, we can't even get out of our driveway. Nobody's moving. Everybody's staying put until it kind of clears up some and they can clear the roads and stuff. And then she says, oh, by the way, Earl and I went down to Lansing to see his, his cousin or something. It's, you know, she, she, she just described this. 
situation. And she's already said, but we went to Lansing. It's a 60 mile trip. <laughs> My wife and I laughed about that. She was funny without even trying to be funny. Well, good. Yeah. That's good to have a mother that makes you laugh. Yeah, my mother was had a great laugh, and uh, I had uh, I had did a lot of laughing. And when I was in college, uh, something tickled me. I'd laugh, and this one guy didn't like the way I laughed, so he tried to mimic it. And uh, I, I turned to him one day. I said, "You just go right ahead, son. I enjoy life, and this is my laugh." And whether you like it or not, I'm going to keep on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they brought you something to eat here and drink, I think. Uh, I don't want to keep you from having it. Does he need to eat his he he needs drink? Some he yeah. can. can you have some of this glucerna here? Okay, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got plenty of bosses? A whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's better when it's cold. Mm -hmm. Thanks for saying something. Quiet mm -hmm. stomach. A bite of applesauce? Yeah, I'll take a bite of applesauce. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Some days I can get a get up and move around. I like those days better. <laughs> but uh, today I've not been able to do it. Spill that on your dad. Careful with it. Yeah. It's good. Good old applesauce. Mm. A little water. Wash some of it down. It takes good care of me. <laughs> Oh, everybody takes care of me. I got all kinds of... I got, I got the top off already for you. Yeah, people coming in and feeding me and bathing me. I had a lady today bathe me in bed. Uh -huh. And uh, I think the lid's already off that, Jim. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a cul-de-sac utility, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, sometimes the water tastes, tastes wrong. Wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll put a little bit on top for you, so next time you can... Okay. Okay. Do you have enough of everything? You need some water? He just right? needs a little bit. And, uh, uh -huh. You want any more of this concern? I'll eat it if you want me to. My wife makes me dr eat all this stuff. Does she make you drink the whole thing or just a few she sips? She doesn't make me drink the whole thing sometimes. Maybe, sometimes. maybe just a couple more sips. If and you then feel like you can, it right. might be a good idea. That's what she, she, she listens to the nurse. and So everything that I do, the nurse has told her to, to have me do it. So. Okay. Good enough. Good. <laughs> Uh, life is so good, and, and God's been so good to me. Right, and you can appreciate what you can do each day. Yeah. Even um, though there's things that we want to do. Yeah, that we can. yeah. I, you know, I've been told that I don't have much more time, but they don't say how much time I might have. The other night I was, uh, I had a gas attack up here. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought, okay. Well, yeah, it could be real painful. Yeah, and I, and I thought, 
okay. I said, I guess it's going to be tonight. And, but it wasn't, and I was surprised. But uh, God knows the time, and he's picked it out, and I'll find out one of these days. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you'll close your eyes one time, and when you open the next time, you'll be Whoa. seeing him. Yeah. Well, the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's a exciting, that's a part of uh, knowledge that I don't have because I haven't died yet. <laughs> but uh, it's all a, a great adventure. You know, I, Jacob said it was a pilgrimage. And I, and I get that picture more and more in my mind that I've lived a pilgrimage, you know. God was watching over me from my youth to... Alaska to Belmont to Southwestern Seminary to my churches and and uh, so God has just been watching over me all my life and uh, I came face to face with him and my need of him and and he changed my life and and uh, I'm so grateful for his grace and I just I feel unworthy of all of his love and I am unworthy but one of the neat things that I do every night before I fall asleep is I go through the alphabet with titles and names of God and I think on each one of those titles and uh, and visualize the best I can, you know, uh, different names. Mm -hmm. Different you know? aspects of his character. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, it really is enriching. And some of them are more uh, tender. Uh, the, like for instance, the anchor of my soul, and. Uh, I know the story of that was when the ships would come into this harbor, there would be this big rock, and, and they would put their chains through this rock. And no matter what the storm was, that rock was solid and would hold them. And I think, so no matter what you're going through, God is holding you. God has you in his sand, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, oh, I'll tell you a funny story, Arbiter, the, the lawyer, I was on my way up to Michigan one time to go fishing, and uh, I was on a plane full of lawyers and secretaries going to Chicago for a party time, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> so I said, I know a lawyer has never lost a case. What was that? I said, I know a lawyer who has never lost a case, and he never will. Well, who in the world is that? It's Jesus, the mediator between man and God. The arbiter who pleads our case before the Father. Boy, a change came over that entire plane. <laughs> All those people were planning on a wild party up in Chicago, and suddenly they got started thinking about God. Yeah. So God says, "I, I thanked Him for that. I said, thank you, Lord, because I pray for." knowledge about how do you approach people because everybody is a little you know different got a different occupation and different interest and different things and, and so I sometimes fail in reaching someone I wanted to reach and then I go back home and I think about how could I have reached him you know, how could I have shared Christ with him? And uh, so I come up with all kinds of stuff, but uh, now I don't have a chance to do that because I'm here, but I'm going to 
Tell of my dying day, I'm going to talk about Jesus. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him and uh, my mother and all those that preceded me, my pastor, mm -hmm. all my church members that uh, made it to heaven. And, uh, you know, and I, I can't wait to, uh, to see them and that's a rapture and and just the joy that we're going to have in, a, in our presence with each other and uh, so I'm just waiting and uh, I thought I was going to go the other night but I didn't <laughs> but it's okay whatever he decides some days I'm stronger, some days I'm weaker. And uh, I don't know how many days I got. And it doesn't matter because God is in control. Mm -hmm. right. And He's going to take me home when He wants to. And uh, I'm ready for Him to take me home. So. Uh, That's a good way to feel at this stage of life. <laughs> yes, it is. So I'm I'm gonna miss everybody here. The hardest thing is saying goodbye here. And uh, I've talked to all of Mark's kids and they all cried. I had a night one night I said, I, I need to talk to you about what I faced because I'd been told by a nurse that day that I only had so many weeks. Mm -hmm. She didn't know how many. So I thought, well, I better, better clear it with my son and and his precious grandchildren whom I love and uh, so some of them just cried and cried and I, I relived the memories with each one and uh, they're so special and uh, Well, it's special that you get to have this experience with them. Yeah. A lot of people don't. Yeah, well, if we had stayed in Arkansas, we wouldn't uh, wouldn't have been able to be here. Uh, we went up to Arkansas because we wanted to be with our family. And uh, we had a home there for two and a half years or something. And God blessed. And... and uh, I, we were able to be used of God in that church, and, and the people were wonderful. And uh, but when Mark got the call to come down here, and when we came down here, I said, "Well, we we considered Mount Pleasant because of the hospitals, because Camille could see me going down, and and uh, but then we said, no, nah. I said." The reason why we left Texas in the first place was so that we could be with our family. Mm -hmm. And I said, so God opened up this house for us and uh, he brought the price down where we could handle it and we, we bought it. Uh, when this house, when I first came in this house, it was dark brown, all of the walls and everything. Mm -hmm. And I took one step in the door and I says, I'm not living in that house. It's too dark. <laughs> and uh, Mark says, hey, Dad, there is such a thing as a can of paint. <laughs> <laughs> and so they painted all this house and it's like, I like it now. Yes. And, uh, but it was funny. And uh, the people left us a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, left us a big TV and uh, entertainment center there and they left us a, a beautiful refrigerator and uh, so they said whatever we've left is yours so we said well thank you so uh, we still talk to them sometimes and uh, are grateful that they did such a good job with the house mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, so it's really uh, nice to 
nice to be here in this place and I had I, I, I hate to tell this to a Texan because it's it's true but it's not bad when I left Michigan to come to seminary 72 in Michigan the grass was green the rivers were full I went to sleep in a Greyhound bus. And I woke up in Texas. The grass had turned brown. Rivers I didn't see. I stepped out of the bus at Fort Worth, Texas, and 105 heat hit me. And I said, Lord, you could send me anywhere but Texas. <laughs> So that's where you ended up. So I ended up, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right. Now, welcome, Hello. Oh, it's always been funny as I get out. So I've spent most of my life in Texas. I'm going to die in Texas. So I, I said, well, that's the way they, things turned out. I didn't. Plan it that way, but I wanted to be with my son. His ways are not our ways. <laughs> no, no, that's right for sure. <laughs> yeah. I think I had a fellow tell me one day, not too long ago, about you want to hear God laugh? Just tell him what your plans are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's a good, good point. <laughs> Well, it's been an adventure, and it's been a pilgrimage, and, and I've enjoyed it. Sounds like you've made the most of it. It's been a wonderful experience, and uh, every person I've met is a uh, price. I just think how much better heaven's going to be. I know it. When this is so great, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rapture is going to be uh, un. You can't imagine it. Mm -hmm. It's just like God. I told Ted, my buddy Ted, he came to see me. I said, God is beyond our imagination. We can't visualize God. He's too big. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, have you ever tried to sit down and, and visualize the stars that are out there? I think that God placed every one of them and knows their name. I said, have you ever thought about that? You know, and uh, all of creation. One of the things I like to watch is uh, different. Uh, and the thing I don't like about it is the naturalistic view that a lot of these people have. But if they would just open their eyes and see what God has put together. They can't explain a lot of stuff, but they say, nature or whatever mm -hmm. but it wasn't nature it was god and god made all these beautiful wonderful things you know and and fish and flowers and trees and just everything is so unique in the the color schemes of things you know uh the flowers the wildflowers and the, all the wild things that God clothes the earth with and makes it so beautiful. And and this is only a part. Yeah, this is the broken version. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's beyond uh, our, my comprehension anyway. And... Uh, but I have seen some beautiful mountains, beautiful streams, beautiful forests, you know, and uh, I've just been amazed at what God has put together. It's, uh, it's, it's fun to look at it from God's point of view rather than a naturalistic hmm. point of view. <laughs> Well, I'm proud of both of you. You're, you're great. I still remember our first conversation on the telephone. 
He said, well, I'm glad we got that one over. <laughs> and Mark, had, he came home and he said he was going to spend all Christmas with us. I said, sure, Mark. <laughs> Every night he'd go underneath the table to talk. <laughs> he'd lay down on the floor. I said to Camille, I said, he's not going to last long. <laughs> <laughs> he was worried about your boys and about you. <laughs> you know, he, now it was me. He should have been. Yeah. <laughs> but he's found it. <laughs> it was funny. Anyway, so when Mike finally got on the phone, he said, Well, I'm glad we got that over. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Caroline has just been such a blessing to our lives too, to my wife and I. She, she's fed us most. A lot of times whenever we've needed food, she's fed us. And, uh, and she's, she's been your daughter. Hey? Yeah, she's been my daughter and I like that when she comes up and snuggles to me. She does most of the time now. And uh, I like it because uh, I never had a daughter. I had two sons. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'd have had a daughter, she'd have been spoiled rotten. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> you never had any daughters either, have you? I have now you got boys. Yeah. My brother Joel has all girls. Mm -hmm. So wow. get the. You know, visit, spoil them, send them back to them. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Youngest one is seven months old now. Uh -huh. so. Oh boy, they're precious. Uh, kids are so great. And she just sits there and smiles the whole time. Doesn't yeah. Fast much. Just mm -hmm. they're very blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when they get off get married I'm a little bit worried because Joel will probably meet them the, the guy they're dating or whatever with a gun at the door <laughs> <laughs> her oh, yeah so. oh, Mark said he'd meet him with us uh, samurai sword yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I expect you to bring my daughter home and says <laughs> oh, Mark's got a situation he's got Three of them means you're gonna have to. Better man than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when our oldest daughter was beginning to date. They were living there in Springdale, and at one particular time, I can't remember exactly who that was. I think it was a fella from. Uh, gosh, I don't know if he's from Little Ro from uh, Eureka Springs or somewhere else. Awful little ways came and and uh, when the guy came to get her, I don't think he even came in. I think he just showed up. They were going to something and and uh, she went out and out they went. And when they came back, they parked out at the street. And boys, her two younger brothers said, uh, "They're here, you know." And so they didn't come in right away. So I told the boys to go. It was getting evening time. I said, go flip the porch light on and off several times. <laughs> she, uh, they flipped it on. It happened a couple of times before finally Rebecca came in the house. <laughs> she was mad because, well, the guy wouldn't. I don't know if he even came in and visited with I don't us. remember. Specifically, I just remember the boys got where they did that any time she went out. Yeah. When she got home, <laughs> <laughs> guy. I don't think he ever came back in. We were suspicious of him anyhow. I don't remember it all. Uh, he yeah, was kind of a, maybe he lived there in, in Fayette, but he was kind of a rich guy or his family was, I don't know what the whole story was, but he didn't, he didn't come visit with us at all. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that was the last time we saw him. And she wasn't particularly impressed with him either after it was all over with, but she didn't particularly like, after that, it was, like she said, it was a habit. It was a, an opportunity. Anytime one of the 
boyfriends that show up, those guys and be flipping <laughs> looking at the Brothers come in handy. <laughs> They wouldn't carry along outside. <laughs> uh, well, our kids are really important. And uh, my two boys have really been a blessing to me and to my wife. Uh, I don't know what we would have done if we, if Mark hadn't been around Jimmy at different times. Uh, They've really helped me out a lot. And Mark explains things uh, about uh, the medication and stuff that I'm taking. So, I, so I'll so i take it <laughs> because he's got to answer to his mother. <laughs> Camille makes me take it. And, uh, my stomach just was rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And it won't stop, and it's not going to stop until I die. Is it worse when you eat something, anytime you eat anything? Or? Well, I feel uh, more pressure when I eat something because I've already got a stomach full of gas. Uh -huh. So when I add food to it, it's, yeah. it's just it's that much more. Everything. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So I don't like to eat. You know, if I could, I'd just quit eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I can't eat anything I like anyway. You know, I mean, the truth of the matter is I have to eat. You can't have any more pie. Huh? I can't. <laughs> not, not supposed to have pie and not, not supposed to have pizza or, or hamburgers fried or chicken. fried chicken. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> we don't want to make you talk. <laughs> oh, and my wife and I were, and the kids were littler. We had a vacation down in, in, somewhere in Arkansas. And uh, a family had turned their house into a restaurant and the family did the cooking and uh, serving. You know, that was all family oriented. And we got the best chicken we ever put in our mouth in that house. I mean, it was wonderful. And we had a wonderful time that, that week or whatever it was. And so you still have those memories, even if you can't have. Yeah, <laughs> I think about. Yeah, I think about all the, all the food I've eaten all over the world. Uh, I've been to Brazil and got the greatest hot dog I ever had in my life. And I've been to Australia and they have a special dessert that they made for the Queen when she came to visit, and it's really good. And then I've been to Brazil, and Brazil is just kind of like we are. It's just a, a whole bunch of different things, but they eat a lot of meat, too. And uh, I've been to Brazil, and I've been to Taiwan, and Taiwan is uh, more towards uh, rice and uh, fish and stuff like that. And uh, it was good. And fact is, I had... <laughs> I think about this as it grosses me out. On the train going to where I was going, they were, had cups in your seat, and they put came by with hot tea, and uh, it was the best tea I ever had. But I, I think about all the people that had drunk from that cup. <laughs> <laughs> and all the, you know the thing, you know. I said, man, it's just, you know, you exposing yourself to all kinds of possibilities. <laughs> but Taiwan was a beautiful country too, and uh, it was fun. So I've just enjoyed my whole life. That's wonderful. And I'm so glad for your wonderful, beautiful daughter. And uh, she has she has ministered to us. And uh, when I was able to get up and go to sit in there, she would come 
and uh, snuggle up to me sometimes and that'd make me feel so good. <laughs> She's a sweetie. Yeah, she is. Yeah, you all had some great, great daughters. <laughs> I don't know about much of your sons. I, I hear that uh, one of them was a great athlete. Mm -hmm. Another's a scientist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, one's an athlete, the other one's a scientist. They both like nature pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pete's teaching at a Haas Hall Academy. I guess it's the premier uh, school in Arkansas. The academic. Uh. Yeah, premier school system. There's a, what are there, five different ones? There's one in. Bentonville, one in Rogers, one in, uh, is there one in Springdale? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one in Springdale, one in Fayetteville. They're, it's a private school, or it's a Christian school, and uh, they have real high standards. They have a lottery every year where you want to go to Haas Hall. I mean, it, it's not free public education. You ha They ha have to be paid for, and, and uh, but students have to sign up. And, and have certain grade points or yeah. I think you even have to take some kind of an entrance exam. And it's real select. They have a big lottery every year where there's more people than they have spaces for it, so they have to choose. I don't know exactly how they do all that, but a lot of people get disappointed. And then they're real strict. They have school uniforms, certain standards that they have to wear. Huh. Pete says they don't, you know, if you're having trouble with the kid, you take it to the administration and the administration gets the parents and they, you either work it out or you're out of here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot different from public school and uh, the teachers have autonomy in their classrooms and none of this don't offend the children. Yeah. The children tell the line or yeah. down the road they go. And, uh, and then you got no nonsense in the classroom. You can, like people are saying, you can spend your time teaching, yeah. not trying to right. placate a bunch of troublemakers and yeah. then distracted. Yeah. Uh, he's really enjoying it. And of course, it's he's got to have. There's a lot of work to it too. They really have to. You know, you got to figure out your own lesson plans, and you got to do this and meet certain standards and busy, busy. Yeah. You know, we we kind of stayed after him for a long time for not getting uh, a teaching license through the the state so he could teach in a public school. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's more to it than just the highest check you can get. Yeah. It's, you, it's a real fulfilling, I think, with his as he goes through this. He's really enjoying what he's doing. Yeah. And Tommy has been, I don't know, he's done all kinds of things in his life. And, Construction and plumbing and electrical and uh, real estate, and selling cars. I mean, he's done lots of things. And now he still does some work for his wife's real estate thing. He's still a realtor and does, I don't know, all that's involved there. But he's working for the city of Bella Vista hmm. on their parks uh, and grounds. Parks and lakes. The lakes. It's where he works. They, he's Chainsaw on trees, get cleaning them up. Uh, people, Drain, people draining lakes. Yeah, people tagging fish, all kinds of stuff. I think you'd like some of it too. People uh, sink their boat. Him and his crew go out, raise the boat, get it out of the lake. <laughs> he just he sounds just like a fun loves job, it. doesn't it? <laughs> he just loves it. Uh, yes. And I'm glad he got something that he really enjoys. It's a lot of jobs he had that he did a good job at, but he didn't like them. Yeah. yeah. He'd rather be doing something else. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's really comfortable with what it is now. He's he seems real at peace, and uh, his kids are all growing up, getting uh, up on the well. His oldest daughter, I guess, is out of the house, and and. Uh, and another daughter is getting ready. But well, she got another year of high school. She'll graduate this year. He'll graduate this yeah. year, and then his uh, son is a junior this year, I guess. 
No, he, he's a sophomore. A sophomore this year. Yeah, okay. yeah he was a math grader. Yeah. yeah, he was a math grader last year on the on the varsity team, baseball team. He, yeah. He's a real good athlete. He's the one scared the banner now. But then he's got a younger daughter who has some special needs, and but she's doing real good. And, uh, just tickles us to all of her kids seem to be pulling their own weight. Just enjoying their lives and yeah. grandkids are successful and doing well. And That's really a, a, And we you, never planned for any of that. <laughs> Not really. We always dreamed for that. But, you know, as far as making a concrete plan to make sure, uh, God's been good to us too. Just, uh, I think sometimes about, I, I see some of my grandkids and and, and aware of their plans and how hard they're working and things. And I think back, I don't remember ever doing that when I was a kid. I think I just stumbled along, <laughs> you know, and I, I can't remember ever making a concrete plan about what am I going to do. Yeah. And uh, I'm just amazed sometimes that it turned out as well for everybody as it seems to, and for me too. <laughs> yeah. I can't say. It was, I was the reason that this happened. I, I just yeah. stumbled along and God blessed me along the way. Yeah, he has to. Yeah. The yes. best thing he ever did for me was introduce me to this young lady. Yeah. And I saved my life, saved it all. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing what a great woman can do for you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when... Uh, and I met Camille, and God told me that she's the one. And we've been married 48 years now. And uh, all the things that we've been through, you know, the, all the missionary work and, you know, the churches and everything, and she was getting advice from everybody how to, how to be a preacher's wife and everything and uh, I, I would sometimes disagree with what the preacher's wives would tell her that uh, she didn't need to worry about that you know but she wouldn't like for instance I would when I married her and found out she could sing I said I, I want you to sing every time before I preach you know, as a you know, a unit, a mm -hmm. team, and uh, the one lady said to her, "Don't, don't sing too often because somebody in your church will get jealous and that cause problems." And so Camille wouldn't do it. And she stuck with her guns, and I, I told her, "I said, well, I disagree with that." I said. Uh, I'm a preacher, and you're a great singer, and I said, uh, I've learned that music opens the hearts of people, and I said, they're ready for the sermon, and uh, but she would not never change after that woman talked to her, and so I said, oh boy, and so you have to put up with everybody else's advice, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> but she's made a great wife, and uh, so I'm, I'm most blessed, uh, in, in spite of the fact she hasn't sung every Sunday. <laughs> when we first, I've had people tell me that that business that I knew or God told me that was the one. How, how do you? You can't tell me that. I said, well, I, I, I can't tell you that's for you. I'm just telling you that when I was a sophomore in high school and I went to this choir class that I took, what was I doing with choir? I thought, well, I, it's an elective class. I don't want anything I have to work at. It didn't look to me like singing as much work, so, and I sang at church. I thought, I'll just take that. That'll be a way to spend an hour that is easy. Yeah. And I remember standing up there in the choir the first week or so we were getting 
used to each other in the choir director, Mr. Hale, and, and I happened to look across the choir one day and there was these two eyes looking right at me and I thought, oh yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> and it was, that was when it happened, right there. Yeah. Uh, we had some, I had some bonehead times after that where I, I wouldn't have blamed her to walk away, but you know, I, I can look back at that time and, and I know right then that was God's appointment for us to see each other. And, uh, you know, I, I tried to play the field a whole bunch and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it never worked. I just kept coming back to <laughs> like, a, like you saw about fishing. You, you hook them. And all you let them run a little bit, and they wear themselves out, and you reel them on in a little more, <laughs> and eventually, it worked. <laughs> and you know, I tell people that, and they, they can't understand, I say, well, I was telling Frank, a friend of mine at the bakery here the other day, uh, he's he'd married, I think he's divorced two or three times, has a couple of children here and there, and, and of course, in his older years, he's not like he was. He's he's mellowed just because yeah. of reality. Yeah, he's had to slow down. We were talking about it, and I said, "Well, you know, people say this and that." I said, "But that happened my sophomore year in high school, and this last week I uh, celebrated my 50th anniversary, married to the same woman, five children. They're all." having great lives, they're all doing good, they're all healthy, they got good minds, they all know the Lord. Yeah. I said, you know, when I read the Word, that's that's what the Word tells me, your life ought to look like, something like that. Good family, happy people, all praise the Lord. That's what He put us here for. Yeah. And uh, I said, Instead of burn piles of burning, smoking embers of different relationships throughout yeah. your life, and the ripples that are that come from those events, when you throw a stone in the pond, yeah, you can't stop the ripples; they go, and and that's a decision you make to do that or not to do yeah. the right thing. Yeah, and other people are affected. It's tragedy. Yeah. I mean, I've had some bad things I've done in my life. I don't want to start listening. I couldn't go on forever, but uh, yeah. But you know, I can't say that I've. I can't remember that I've just purposely destroyed other lives or injured people's lives. Uh, I don't. I can't look back and think of. Well, I know there's some people that didn't like things I did, and I know I made some, a lot of mistakes, but. Uh, I thank God that he, he steered me in my life with my family and with the woman that I married. He kept drawing me to him and he's still to this day drawing me to him. Yeah. Uh, nothing I've done to deserve it. And yeah. Yeah. I know I will be eternally grateful for yeah. what he did for me. Yeah. His grace is marvelous, and uh, it's just beyond our comprehension. Even I, I sometimes meditate on different aspects of the Christian faith, and and I think about how do you how do you measure grace? You know, and uh, there's saving grace. That's easy. Ephesians two eight and nine. But there's grace that's given us every day, every experience. And it's not because of who we are or what we've done. Is that like common grace? I mean, it's just so like God's graciousness is pouring out. That's right. Common grace. Yeah. And he has, you know, I've, I used to have a friend, George uh, Denny. Uh, at a church we went to for a long time. He's gone on the Lord. But I really admired him 
uh, with his Bible knowledge and and uh, his calm character about things around him. Uh, he didn't get excited about things that are happening because of the grace of the Lord and his abiding presence. Mm -hmm. And that was something I read in a Caldwell Taylor uh, uh, you know, what's the word for it? Uh, he has a little book of Devotion. devotionals. And uh, in, in that devotional one time, I've always heard the unmerited favor of God uh, or what God does for us even though we don't deserve it. A lot of things about grace. But then I read this one and he was saying that grace is the abiding presence of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. No matter the circumstances of our life, as rocky as it may get or whatever, God is always, He's constantly working for our good. Yes. Because He loves us. Yeah. And I begin to think about that. That's the, the point about grace is that once He He sent Jesus, once He determined to send Jesus to save us from our our sin, it's it's almost like it's out of our hands. Yeah. He's the irresistible drip, 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 drip. It, it, it can't stop that. Uh, you can't stop God from loving you. Now, you can reject that love. Uh, but that doesn't even offend Him because uh, He loves you. Yeah. And He continues. Uh, it's just... Now I think about things I did in my life. And how could God forgive me? Yeah. Well, I don't understand. But He assures me that He does forgive me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Dave, one of David's prayers. I, I, I've, I've sinned against no one but God. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. You did some. Yeah. You know, you, you sent that guy to the front lines to be killed. So you were right. Take yeah. his wife. And yeah, it's adultery. But I only sinned against God. Because ultimately, all of our, all of our rebellion and sin is directed against God. And uh, that's true. Uh, I believe that very much. Uh, but I'm. Like you, I'm 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 a recipient of all of the goodness and His grace, and I have never deserved anything that God has given me. But God in His grace has given me everything anyway, and uh, He's watched over my entire life, and uh, every 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 aspect of it is. But in, in his oversight, his view, and uh, so that's uh, when I think about God. Uh, sometimes it blows my mind <laughs> yeah. because I, I I try to visualize all the stars and God knowing every one of them by name and uh, how He created all this with a word. You know, just a powerful word, and uh, you know, just to, to, the awesomeness of God is is something that I I think that you know, there's a lot of songs written about what's going to be like when I face Jesus, and people talk about it. Well, I'm going to shout and I'm going to do this. I said, my my place is going to be on my knees before my Lord. And, and uh, that, that's where I'm going to be because I, I can't see me standing in His presence because yeah. of who He is. Yeah. And uh, well, the idea that as awesome as He is, He created it all in the work of the Word. Yeah, he says that 
before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Yeah, foreknowledge of God he, is beyond comprehension. And he had already chosen me at the foundations of creation. Takes a lot of pressure off you, doesn't it? It does. You don't have to work so hard anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, we better go and let you get We love you too. Love you. Both of you are great people. And uh, I'm so grateful for the beautiful daughter that my son has the privilege to be married to. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is a blessing just many times over. They're a great team, aren't they? Yep. Sure. Are. Uh, you want you want to pray us out, Lord? As we uh, just begin to touch the fringe of your garments, just begin to get insights in, into the greatness that you are. The wonder that you are, the beauty that you are, the mag magnificent character that you are. We thank you for the heart that you have for us. Because as a father loves his children, so you love us. And as a mother hen would gather her chicks, you, you long to gather us to yourself. Lord, we look forward to our journey, every step of it. It's a, a wonderful journey that we get to go on with you because you're ever leading us closer and closer to the time when we will see you in all your glory and we'll be able to more handle how magnificent you are. I thank you for these that are here in this room. Lord, we have, uh, we are recipients of your grace. Uh, you have been watching over us since uh, we were born. You foresaw that we would believe in you and trust you and, and that we would marry who we married and and have beautiful wonderful children that we've had and have experiences that are hard to describe Lord, all of it is from you you tenderly watch over us as the song says and you call us unto yourself and we long for that moment when we will close our eyes here and you've given us a great amount to see here and uh, we shall open them to see your glory and to see your wonder and to see your love and uh, we shall rejoice in your presence. Lord, thank you for these that are here. Uh, each one loves you, Lord. And uh, I had the privilege to, uh, to say, I love you. And I do. We cry, Abba, Father, my dear Heavenly Father. And I'm so grateful that you give us uh, sermons and words from your precious book that let us know that we are more special than the birds that fly. And, uh, everything that uh, we see on earth is not to be compared to who you are. So thank you, Lord, for the journey, for the pilgrimage, for these that are here. And I pray your blessing upon them as they travel home. Thank you for bringing them here for just a few moments of uh, talking together. I have loved these folks since I got to know them and 
You have loved him long before I knew him. And you love us still today. We can't even begin to comprehend the love that you have for us. But as John said, we love you because you first loved us. And we thank you, Lord, for that. Please protect him as they travel home and be with Mike as he has his surgery and uh, make it successful. And thank you for the life they've lived and that has affected so many in such a good, positive way. And thank you, Lord, for my son, Mark, who helps me uh, so much with uh, so many things. So bless him, I pray. And thank you, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Mike. Yeah. Y'all are great people. See you again this evening. Okay. So. All right. Come by and say goodbye. All right. <laughs> Love you. All right, Mama wanted me to give you this diuretic. We probably need to let.